What's up everybody, Brian Wagner, Senior Area Dragzine here at an NHRA points meet here in Columbus, Ohio. And we're checking out some of the, the cool cars in the pits and we ran into Doug Duell and wanted to talk to him about going stock class racing to really kind of give you the, uh, the overview of what goes into making one of these cars like the one behind me run the numbers they run and how complex it's stock class racing really is. Here with Doug Duell, stock class racer. And Doug, stock is a very interesting class, probably one of the most interesting in all of drag racing. Kind of uh, explain to our viewers what it, what it means to go stock class racing. Well, um, you get to drive the car you want to drive and there's so many different setups and combinations that you, you can use. So you can really hone in on your favorite car and there's so much character within this class of different kinds of cars and engine combinations. And then when you get to the class part where you get to run heads up, um, it, it's really a, a special kind of racing. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about stock class racing is that you're really trying to find find a sweet spot. You're trying to find a combo that works and gets within the rules to have you an advantage, right? Correct. Some combos are very, very popular, especially some of the General Motors uh, combos and some of the bigger block combos. And over time, the horsepower rating on those is maybe not favorable. So sometimes you, you want to kind of look through the guide and find something you feel like is more favorable and it may have some, some R&D left in it till you can go fast. So that's the great thing about NHRA class racing is just all, all the different combos you can run. And talking about the horsepower combo thing with that, how does that work exactly? Okay, so every motor came from the factory with a horsepower rating. And then over time, NHRA will correct that if cars are going too fast. Uh, they have a formula that they add on to that horsepower rating, or you can actually have it deducted um, if the combo is not uh, competitive. And then based upon that, there's a power rating on your class that you choose, and you multiply that times the horsepower, add 170 pounds to it for the driver, and then that gives you your minimum weight. So it's physics, so the lighter the car, the faster it is. So you want to watch that horsepower rating so you can keep the car light. And then as far as what you can do to the engine, it's not wide open, you know, because you, ha you have the basic, com you know, the configuration you have to use, but you can't go hog wild and use billet parts or anything like that. There's a pretty limited list on what you can do, isn't there? Now, let's pop the hood and take yeah. a look because we can use some examples here. So, remember, the name of the class is Stock Eliminator. So, although things have changed dramatically, I can remember in the 60s when my dad drove the original Dragon Wagon, he took his ashtray out and put a gauge in there and came to an event and they were gonna throw him out if he didn't put the ashtray back in. Now fast forward from the 60s to today, things have changed dramatically from safety and the, it's picked these cars up a lot faster, but still a lot of things are the same. So we have, like this is a 1969 Plymouth Barracuda with a 440 engine. We've still gotta use the correct part number ABS carburetor. I still have to use the correct part number intake manifold. This is not a high performance intake manifold by any stretch of the imagination. There are some liberties I've given us. We can use an aftermarket cylinder head, aluminum cylinder head, but it has to be to the stock specifications. The block, stock steel block we have to have in the car. The cubic inches were allowed a little bit over on bore and a 15 thousandths on the stroke, but it's very close to a 440 and that's the max size the engine can be. Compression camshaft have limitations on those also. So although over time things have evolved a little bit, it's still stock eliminator with a lot of stock parts on this car. And that's part of the game is you find the combo, you have the parts list, and then it's up to you as the racer and the engine builder to find out how you can extract every ounce of horsepower, right? That's true. And then, you know, beyond the engine, Anything that can be lighter is going to help this thing. So all the way through the powertrain, the, the transmission, even the, the lug nuts on the car, you know, we're looking for lightweight legal parts that we can use to help this thing roll as easily down the drag strip because there's just going to be limitations how much power we can put in this motor. So it's legitimately the greatest exercise and optimization in all of motorsports. I would say so. I would say so. And then you basically... You have the index that you qualify against, correct? The lower you go, the better you're qualified, right? Is that how that works? Correct. So every uh, class is going to have an index. This C-Stock Automatic runs off the 1140 index. Um, in eliminations, you have to dial 
below that, okay? So a good stocker can run a second under that index. So a good one's gonna run, in this case, about 1040. Um, but if you go 1030s, they're tracking that, and then they're gonna track all these runs, and if at the end of the year they decide that, that this combo is too fast, they're gonna add some horsepower, which means we're gonna get some weight added to the car, which is gonna slow us down. So you, you have to have a balancing act here of, uh, if you want a fast, fast car, but once you kind of get to that second, you have to manage that combination at that point. And, and stock is really, you know, in that sense, it's bracket racing to a degree until we get to class, you know, eliminations where you're running someone heads up or you're in an event where you're running out class. Kind of talk about that because that's where that's where things get interesting and in, in the game really picks up, isn't it? It, it is, and I've, a lot of new racers, they get a combination, and uh, against the index, it's not fast. They're good on the tree, and when they run other cars, they're fine, and they seem to be satisfied, but what I tell them is over time, in the eliminations, if you run another car in your same class, it's heads up, okay? And you're not gonna feel real good when you get waxed by a half a second or more because you really haven't tried to make the car go faster over time. So that's part of this game of doing that. And then I think there's a fair number of racers that yes, they wanna come out here and win and they, they work on the tree and work on their driving, but a lot of it is playing with these things, maybe on the dyno or trying stuff at the drag strip to try to make them faster. Because when you, you've got a fast car, you know, you, it, it, people notice it and I think they respect that. So, um, you know, some races don't care about that, but a lot of them do. But bottom line is, everybody wants to win. So when it comes to whether you're in eliminations and you get a heads up or just in class racing, they try to achieve to get their car as fast as possible. We do bracket race, if you will, with different classes, but it's still a performance-based class. And you may drive all day and get to the final, and if you got a heads up and you don't have a fast car, you're gonna get beat. And that, that's the point, what makes racing, you know, class, like it's something like Indy, it's such a big deal because that's, that's who's showing off who has the fastest car for that combination. Uh, Indy is such an iconic race and so much history behind it. And when you can win your class at Indy, it's a big deal. People come from all over the country with big ex expectations of winning the class. And you kind of find out when you start running some of these guys in different divisions, maybe you've seen their performances, but kind of when you get to Indy and it's always kind of hot and sticky and you're just there and the pressure of it. And if you can win class, it's awesome. I've been lucky enough to win it a couple times. And the first time I won it, uh, it, it, it brought tears to my eyes. I'm, I'm feeling that jolt right now in this interview. It's just, it's just a feeling that's just really really hard to explain but it's awesome and when you run when you see cars running heads up in class it's always interesting when you're walking through the pits because you could see the guys that know that they've got a heads up matchup because they're pulling out all the stops they're draining fluids out of cars they're icing it down you're doing everything you can to get every ounce out right what well, what are some of the things you've had to do to to do that that you can reveal well that uh i think everybody kind of does the same thing so i don't think it's really too big a secret um one thing that everybody likes to do is run the motor as cool as we can possibly run it. Uh, we have a device called a chiller, so it's basically just a cooler with a pump in it, and we hook it into the cooling system of the car here, and we let it run and circulate ice water through this thing. Um, on my combination, it picks it up almost a tenth when you do that. Uh, we push it up to the starting line. There's times that my temperature gauge, I'm at, the engine temperature is below 50 degrees, and when you start it, you can just hear it's different, and it, it clearly increases the horsepower of the car. Um, the next thing is, is oil. Um, this is a little chancy. The less oil in the motor and the lighter viscosity the oil in the motor, the faster the car is gonna go. But when, especially cars at wheelie, and we have a limited size oil pan, we don't wanna have an oil starvation and lose a bearing. So, but we'll take a chance, okay, and put zero weight or zero 10 weight oil in it and run sometimes two or three less quarts of oil than we really, really want to run. And we kind of only do this at Indy because we're definitely taking a chance, but it definitely picks the car up um, quite a bit. Um, different guys, maybe a little more timing, uh, maybe some jetting in the carburetor that they know puts them on kill. 
Um, and then just as light as you can get it, right down to that minimum. Um, th th those are kind of, I think, the most common things people are doing to make the cars go fast. Well, Doug, thank you so much for giving us this, this glimpse into one of the most interesting classes of uh, NHRA racing. And uh, we'll see you again soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Awesome.